story time. Now we'll read a couple of chapters today because they're quite short, okay? So, so far, George has made his marvellous medicine, hasn't he? And he's gone round the different rooms and he's collected lots of different ingredients. And he was naughty and went and got some animal pills, didn't he? And then he ended up in the garage. Can you think of anything else he added since the last time? Have you got anything? He also added things like engine oil and grease and then all of those different kinds of animal medicines. Remember, don't make this medicine. <laughs> right, here comes the next chapter. This chapter is called The Cook-Up. In the kitchen, George put the saucepan on the stove and turned up the gas flame underneath it as high as it would go. There he is. Oh, look, the colour of this paper is a bit like what we were doing with the pirate map. The treasure map. George! Came the awful voice from the next room. It's time for my medicine. Not yet, Grandma, George called back. There's still 20 minutes before at 11 o'clock. What mischief are you up to in there now? Granny screeched. I hear noises. George thought it best not to answer this one. He found a long wooden spoon in a kitchen drawer and began stirring hard. The stuff in the pot got hotter and hotter. Soon, the marvellous mixture began to froth and foam. A rich blue smoke, the colour of peacocks, rose from the surface of the liquid, and a fiery, fearsome smell filled the, ki filled the kitchen. It made George choke and splutter. It was a smell unlike any he had smelled before. It was a brutal and bewitching smell, spicy and staggering, fierce and frenzied, full of wizardry and magic. Whenever he got a whiff of it up his nose, firecrackers went off in his skull and electric prickles ran along the backs of his legs. It was wonderful to stand there stirring this amazing mixture and to watch it smoking blue and bubbling and frothing and foaming as though it were alive. At one point, he could have sworn he saw bright sparks flashing in the swirling foam. And suddenly, George found himself dancing around the steaming pot, chanting strange words that came into his head out of nowhere. Have a look at him chanting. Oh, there he is, and he says, Fiery broth and witch's brew, foamy froth and rich's blue, fume and spume and spoon drift spray, fizzle, swizzle, shout hooray! Watch it slushing, swashing, sploshing, hear it hissing, squishing, spissing. Grandma better start to pray. Oh dear, poor Grandma. That's the end of that chapter. Let's go on to the next one. Chapter 6. Brown paint. Hmm. What do you think I want brown paint for? You think? Any ideas? Let's see if your prediction is true. George turned off the heat under the saucepan. He must leave plenty of time for it to cool down. When all the steam and froth had gone away, he peered into the giant pan to see what colour the great medicine now was. It was a deep and brilliant blue. It needs more brown in it, George said. It simply must be brown or she'll get suspicious. George ran outside and dashed into his father's tool shed where all the paints were kept. There, were, there was a row of cans on the shelf, all colours, black, green, red, pink, white and brown. He reached for the can of brown. The label said simply, dark brown gloss paint, one quart. He took a screwdriver and prized off the lid. The can was three quarters full. He rushed it back to the kitchen. He poured the whole lot into the saucepan. The saucepan was now full to the brim. Very gently, George stirred the paint into the mixture with the long wooden spoon. Aha! It was all turning brown. A lovely, rich, creamy brown. Where's that medicine of mine, boy? Came the voice from the living room. You're forgetting me. You're doing it on purpose. I shall tell your mother. I'm not forgetting you, Grandma, George called back. I'm thinking of you all the time. <laughs> but... There are still ten minutes to go. You're a nasty little maggot, the voice screeched back. You're a lazy and disobedient little worm, and you're growing too fast. George fetched the bottle of Grandma's real medicine from the sideboard. He took out the cork and tipped it all down the sink. He then filled the bottle with his own magic mixture by dipping a small jug into the saucepan and using it as a pourer. He replaced the cork. Had it cooled down enough yet? Not quite. 
He held the bottle under the coal tap for a couple of minutes. The label came off in the wet, but that didn't matter. He dried the bottle with a dishcloth. All was now ready. This was it. The great moment had arrived. Medicine time, Grandma, he called out. I should hope so too, came the grumpy reply. The silver tablespoon in which the medicine was always given lay ready on the kitchen sideboard. George picked it up, holding the spoon in one hand and the bottle in the other. He advanced into the living room. Right, tomorrow the chapter is called Grandma Gets the Medicine. Oh no, what do you think is going to happen? The pictures look good. You wait till tomorrow, it's a good one. I know we won't finish the book before half term, but I will still video some of the, the rest of the book at some point after the holidays, okay? Right, see you tomorrow.